Scanning. Identity authorized. Welcome to the Secret Superhero Club Podcast Network. Welcome everybody to the Animation Station Podcast, episode 196. My name is Josh, and today I am joined by Mr. Cole Howard. How you doing, Cole? I'm doing very well, Josh. Thank you for having me on, man. Oh, no problem at all. Um, so, Cole, uh, just if you wouldn't mind, just kind of give our, our wonderful listeners a little bit about yourself. That was a horribly right. weird um, way to get to that where I wanted to go, but we got there, so... You know what? You, you got through the entire pronunciation of my of my name, uh, unlike one Jason Shimshin. Um, but that's, you know, I, I wasn't going to bring it up, but I, I had to now. Were you Kalei? <laughs> I was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jason. Yeah. Oh, God. I don't... Jason. I try to forget yeah. that. <laughs> I'm uh. not going to let you. Uh. Um, okay. Oh, the, the the briefest of brief rundowns about myself is uh, I'm I'm uh, oh gosh I'm <laughs> see it's uh, it's hard actor. when you get put on the spot like I, I, I bet I bet you weren't thinking you know first thing he's gonna ask me is about myself no like he's gonna he's gonna lay he's gonna list off some stuff I've been in I'll have time yeah but then it's like no <laughs> yeah no who are I you I love this man it's 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 hardball. All right, here we go. I can answer this question. Watch this. Here we go. Um, so I'm a, I'm a 30 year old actor from Canada. Um, I've been doing voiceover acting since about 2006, which is the better part of two decades, which is wild. Um, yeah, geez. And it's I was my, still in high yeah, school. And it, you were yeah, still in yeah. high school. And We're the same age. I was still in high school too. Yeah, but um, it was uh, it's the most insane thing uh it's the thing i love doing most and it's yeah it's it's my favorite thing in the entire world is uh is acting and performing and yeah so i've been doing that for i've been doing that for a while now crazy nice yeah and uh i apologize in advance to anybody there is an ice cream truck like parked like right up the block so if you hear (laughs) some nice little um right now they've been playing uh old mcdonald so if you guys hear any wonderful background audio, you can thank the ice cream truck um, on Alliance Avenue. So you're welcome. Um, so so Cole, uh, so you've been doing so you've been doing this since high school. Like, is that yeah. something? Was like voice acting something that you really wanted to be, or was like did you go in for like acting specifically for voiceover, or did it just kind of evolve from there for you? Yeah, that that's a that's a good series of questions. I think. So I, I was trying to think about this. I was listening to a few of your episodes earlier, and I was kind of uh, pseudo preparing myself for this interview. But um, well, thank you. Basically, thank you the, for listening what, what to I, the episodes. Oh, you're really welcome, man. And uh, to be uh, honestly, some of the like some of the most entertaining animation. Like I love listening to voiceover actors talk about anything. Um, I love them as a group, and it's so much fun to listen to people who are interested in voice acting. Uh, talk to some of my contemporaries and some of the people who I'd love to meet, and it's it, anyways, it's really cool. So, um, yeah, congratulations to yourself for oh, that, my man. You. But um, checks in the mail. So sir. I, I was thinking, <laughs> right? Uh, I was thinking about why I ended up doing this, and I think it just comes back to um, I have a bunch of excellent storytellers uh, in my family. Um, my grandmother was an educator. My father was an educator. Uh, my mom is super quick with, um, with a joke or accents. And so we just grew up in a house where it was very much like, you know, my mom would come in and be like, cool, can you clean your room? Your room's a mess, you know, get it down there and clean it up. You know, and I say, oh, I'm terribly sorry, mother. Don't worry, I'll get on it. Oh, you know. And so it was always just this, this constant game of back and forth and doing shtick and doing bits. And I, my mom, to her credit, she recognized that this will probably be a challenging thing to contain. Uh, so why not get her idiot son to go and channel it? And she threw me into some theater stuff and uh, loved, loved the theater, still love theater, love doing theater. But I was, I was in a show and one of the older actors came up to me and he said, have you ever thought about doing like voiceover? And I said, no, not really. I was probably about 11 at the time. And he said, well, you should really do it. And, and then I just, I, and since then, I was just like, yeah, I think that's what I want to do. 
And then I got my first taste of being behind a microphone a couple years later, and I was hooked. And that was that was it. I, yeah, that was it. Nice. So okay. So growing up with you know in in your your family, um, a lot of good storytellers, mm-hmm. accents, all the fun stuff. Um, was there anything yeah. that you know growing up like you kind of like gravitated to? Like was there a certain like movie actor, anything like that that you were like really into? Ooh. Um. Yeah. I mean, I was uh like Spider Man was my guy. Um. Like I grew up watching Spider Man, uh, cartoons religiously. It was my favorite thing to watch, um, but mostly and like m- most of the the animation in my voice and most of like the way I learned how to like perform and why I enjoy performing was because my my mom and my dad, my sisters and my family were just a great audience, a super receptive audience that were kind of stuck with me anyways. So I just got to try out my worst material, <laughs> and as I grew up and. As we all grew up together, we all just like this this whole shtick that was our family's goofiness. It just sort of it it became an indelible part of my character. So performing was just like something I had to do, and that sounds it sounds hokey when I say it out loud, but it's it's just the truth. There was nothing else I had any interest in doing. I wanted to perform, um, and again, like my my mother just recognized that and said, well. Okay, let's find an avenue for this, for this like bundle of energy to go and b- be out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so let's let's kind of talk about um, you know career. So what was your first like? Mm-hmm. Uh, so you so you got behind the microphone around like what age? Like thirteen, fourteen. I'm gonna say uh, I I I took a few workshops. Um, I took a few workshops here or there, just to kind of feel it out. But the first time I. My mom drove me down to, or drove me uh, south to Calgary, Alberta. I grew up in Edmonton, and she drew me, drove me. Uh, oh, there's an ambulance. Sorry. Um, uh, my mom drove me 300 kilometers south to Calgary, where they were recording. They were doing a bunch of dubs. They dubbed a bunch of Dragon Ball stuff there, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, that was was that Ocean. So that's that's Ocean that, Group. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I drove down, and I was going to audition for them, and I walked in, and I, I did the audition. I did the, the voices I was going to do. Then the two days later, they called me up, and they said, hey, um, you got a part. You're going to come and play Mega Man for the uh, PSP Mega Man Powered Up. And so I, uh, so I, I got to go down, and it was the first – so, paid gig I ever hold got. Up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So your first paid gig, you're freaking Mega Man? Yeah. Dude, yeah. like, I would have quit. <laughs> I, I would have been like, done. I, I I was Mega Man. I know. It can only go right. downhill from here. Yeah, I'm one for one. That's it. <laughs> Batting a thousand. Yeah, it was um it was an incredible it was an incredible thrill. Um and like a terrific learning experience, uh, for your first thing out of the gate too. Uh oh. Yeah, because you wanted to do it right. I mean, you always want to do it right. Yeah. But to go there, it's like, man, I I played those games. I want to do this right, and it was really exciting. Oh man, dude, that's that's freaking awesome. Like that's mm. see, it, it's one of those like you don't usually hear like like th- there there are very few cases in voiceover where somebody's first gig was like this like big thing. Usually, it's like ah, oh, you know, it's first gig. Like I've voiced like half of a you know my little pony character just half of it yeah i was like the back half yeah <laughs> i went and that was That's basically right. it i went clop clop um yeah. but yeah like with that like getting to be mega man dude that's that's pretty baller right there yeah it, it certainly felt like it at the time and i mean it it didn't i mean if you look back in the grand scheme of things it, it wasn't like a high paying gig by any means it wasn't like a big prestige gig by any means i, I wasn't like uh, I had no concept of what it even was going to be in the in the realm of the real world once I got done with it. I was just thrilled to have an opportunity to not go to school and to go <laughs> and get paid to act. It was like, a, th- that's the dream. Still the dream. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, and yeah, so, uh, so you were Mega Man, and then you've also, so mm-hmm. your credits here, you've got Mega Man and then you've got Spider-Man on here too. 
Yeah, yeah. Those are those are two ends of the same of the same spectrum. Uh, but you know, it, it, you will find this if we talk for too long. There's an incredible amount of good luck and good fortune that has gone into built putting together this ridiculous career. Um, but yeah, Spider Man is easily far and away the coolest credit I will ever have. I I imagine. I mean, because because um, you're you're in some you're some true. really good you know, uh you know company there. Like if if we're ever gonna do like you know animated Spider Man's, I mean, we've got Yuri Lowenthal from very popular PS4 yeah. game, and then you've got everybody's yeah, favorite Spider Man. No offense, my friend. Everybody's favorite <laughs> Spider Man, Mister Drake Bell. Yeah, Drake Bell. Yeah, he's terrific. Robbie Draymond. Mm-hmm. Um, who was mm-hmm. who was. In that MTV Spider Man that came out like during Spider Man Three. Oh God, I wouldn't know. I'd have oh, to Google it. Yeah, Not same. Me. It was, it was, <laughs> it was somebody like you're like, oh, really? You were Spider Man? All right, you know, one yeah. of those crazy ones. Um, mm-hmm. But no, dude, that's that's pretty freaking cool. So, so you've gotten to do a yeah, lot of is. these. Um, what are you What are you watching now? Like what's what's your? What am I watching now? Yeah, what are you watching now? I mean, we so we, we, we were talking the, the, earlier. Um, like we both seen Knives mm-hmm. Out. Yeah. So, but but Great. yeah, like what what else? What else? Yeah, what else? Are you peeping? Um. So I think the. I I I I don't want to understate how massive it is for me, but The Witcher on Netflix is mm-hmm. um it's borderline a religion at this point <laughs> because. It's Witcher is Witcher three is far and away my favorite video game of all time. There's no comparison. It's my favorite, and so to see that world and those characters and the costumes and the sets and the props all get like put on screen in front of me and just it it is it is amazing. I love that show. So me and my friends uh, inhaled it, but we did it as slowly as we could and we drew it out and we. We enjoyed every frame of that show. I thought they did a terrific job. Oh, so, so you didn't pull a Josh and just binge it all in a weekend? No, man. Oh, I, so man. I, I think the, 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 this is a part of my larger philosophy here, but I think that, um, like, I, I think we're really missing out on not having appointment television. Having appointment television growing up was important. You know, it, it made a Thursday night a Thursday night. Yeah. It made a Saturday morning a Saturday morning. You know what I mean? Feel like I'm driving at? Yeah, I mean, we, we got a little bit of that with, you know, like Game of Thrones. I mean, because, you know, you, yes, you know, like totally. Sunday nights was Game of Thrones nights. Um, mm-hmm. Yep, Walking Dead did it. Yep. Yeah. Like, uh, when it first dropped. God, man, Sunday Sundays is like the day, apparently, for good shows. Um, yeah. So yeah. and yeah, same thing with like Watchmen this year. Like that one kind of mm-hmm. came out of nowhere for me. Because I mean, like I'm Absolutely. like I'm I'm a DC fan, but like Watchmen was always like, oh yeah, it's Watchmen. Like I, I I didn't I didn't watch the movie until like I think my first time watching the movie was last year. So it was one mm-hmm. of those where I'm like, eh, you know, like I, I like Watchmen's one thing, you know, it's it's a deal. But then watching this, I was just yeah. like, okay, I I get why people like the Watchmen. This is a good show. Um, and then I, I also like that it took place in Tulsa and I'm like, Hey, I, I used to kind of hey. live there. Right. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. I, I know, I know exactly what you mean. It's, it's one of the, it's one of the larger gaps in my nerd resume is that, uh, I, I have never read the, the graphic novel, which I understand is, uh, pretty terrific. Yeah. I, my, my best friend, uh, and, and sometimes co-host of the show, Oliver, he actually bought it for me. I'm sorry, Oliver. I've not read it yet. He bought that for oh, me. No. Oh, maybe like six years ago. <laughs> I'm like, I just, I just haven't, I haven't, I haven't got around to it. You know what? It's it, it's waiting for you, man. You're gonna find a day. You're gonna be putzing around your house, being like, "What do I need to do?" And then you'll see it, and that'll be the day. Well, I mean, that like I, I had one of those recently. I was just like, but but like it was. Uh, I think it was. It may have been the day after Christmas. And I was just like, eh, you know, I got nothing to do. I'm, I'm bored. So I, uh, like, a recommendation from uh, my, one of my best friends, she was like, watch Sense8. And I was like, okay, fine. Yeah. She, she was, you know, 
something that she had been telling me to watch like since it aired on Netflix. Um, and then I'm just like, yeah, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. And then I watched it and I'm just like, well, now I got to finish this entire thing. So I got through the entire series and I'm just like, man, those Wachowskis, geez. Yeah. It was, they're on something. Yeah. It's like the man. Yeah. Like, and, and that like kind of kept me for a while. So I was just like, man, I, I can't watch anything. Everything was so heavy and it was just, Mm -hmm. it was just perfect. You know, like it was just like a perfect series. Like it gave you everything that you could possibly want in a series and then it was done. And they were like, we've told the story. Here you go. And, oh man. I know. That kills. I I, I hate that. I, 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 like, uh, Firefly, of course, is the famous one where it's Mm -hmm. just like, <laughs> why like why weren't you more i i want more of you mm-hmm. and then they gave us a movie and then joss Whedon is just like we're just actually gonna kill your favorite characters yeah yeah that one that one uh, i don't I, I i don't even know if i i don't even know if i accept it as canon to be honest yeah i i love wash too much oh man that was so bad and oh geez hurtful and that that's one thing that this, this podcast really is it's tangents that's that's all we do is we just go Fair. on tangents in the show um <laughs> uh so so you're living in uh, uh vancouver correct yeah that's right yeah so so how is it up in canada how is it up in canada yeah. um well today's rather today's rather chilly and a little snowy um but that's that's you know quite nice i mean it's oh i, I was gonna tell you how cold it was but i, I can't do it in in Fahrenheit. Uh, well, result, what is it? What, what is it in Celsius? Chilly. What is it in Celsius? Well, it's minus seven here. Minus. But seven. where I grew up, I was I was talking to my mom, and it's minus forty, um, which is very very cold. Um, anyways, but you know, weather notwithstanding, um, yeah, it's it's great. I I love this place. I I love um, the city itself is gorgeous. Um, and it's a, it's a wonderful place to live. Um, but the, arguably the best thing about the career that I've had, uh, here in Vancouver is the other people. Um, I mean, like I, when I, I like my, I have close friends, I'm close friends with Jason Simpson and Ian Hanlon and Caitlin Bearstow and, uh, you know, Brian Doe and, Adrian Petru and Jesse and Akala and like these people who are just um, effortlessly funny, endlessly entertaining and wildly, wildly talented. So you're just consistently, consistently floored and impressed and proud of your friends who also happen to be your coworkers. Um, Vancouver is, it is the place for me uh, in terms of like wh- where I'd like to live the rest of my life. Uh, if I had my druthers, I'd live the rest of my life here and die behind a microphone at 96. <laughs> uh, man, see, that's, see, that's great. Like, that's one of the reasons I moved mm. to California was I wanted to be mm. close to everything, but totally. it's one yeah. of those, I moved to California, um, to be close to everything. And the majority of the people that I've had on since I've moved out here are all Canadian. <laughs> So, or as right. everybody's in yeah. Vancouver, I'm just like, uh, should I just gone to Vancouver? So maybe maybe one day I'll make it out to Vancouver because ev- you know everybody at the, says at the it's very great. least. At the very least, it's worth a visit, man. C- c- come and uh, c- come and visit in uh, in the summertime, and I think you'll be you'll be fairly impressed. It's a uh, it is it, it's a gorgeous city, but more more than that, it's uh, it's just it's it's got a little bit of everything, you know. It's got beautiful mountains, ocean, beaches, uh, lots of great food, an incredible amount of good food, lots of good craft beer. I don't know. There's just that uh, I loved where I grew up. I love Edmonton very much. It nurtured me and it taught me how to be a a strong person with some character who can deal with some snow and some cold. <laughs> but uh, I would never move back. Just like I like it's same dude. I, I hear you, man. Like. Oklahoma loved it. Lived there for t- like twenty. That jeez, what thirty years I lived there, mm. and it's like, yeah, I can go back to visit. I don't want to go back. Yeah, 
Same. Like tornadoes? No, I'm done. I don't. I don't need those in my life. Yeah. Live. No. I lived with those too I, much. I actually, you, you want to talk about tangential? So, at the year I was born, Edmonton had a massive tornado rip through it, uh, and it was like one of the few times that that a, a funnel cloud touched down and there was a big tornado. Mm-hmm. And I will never forget driving through southern Alberta one summer. And we saw a funnel cloud forming, and you got, like, those creepy green clouds yep. and everything. And it was just really quiet in the car. It, man, I, I can only imagine living in friggin' Tornado Alley in Oklahoma. Yeah, Madness. like, the the one time that it was, like, really, really bad. Um, well, I mean, like, I, I've been through, like, I, I was in probably one of the safest places for one. I was in a movie theater. Um, and like they specifically (laughs) built it because like it was in more Oklahoma and more Oklahoma gets hit a lot. Uh, that is like the epicenter of like tornadoes in Oklahoma. Um, and so like they built this movie theater with that in mind. So like the hallways of the movie theater, that is one, like they're both tornado shelters. They're concrete, everything. So like they are meant to, um, you know, stand, withstand anything. So I wrote out one in there. But one of them, uh, the one that, like, scared me the most, uh, I was probably about probably 13, and the sky, when we were driving, because we were driving up for a church thing, and the sky was, like, red. And it was just like, it just, like, looks, you look out, and, like, the air feels different, you know what I mean? Like, it just feels weird outside, and the sky's yeah. red, and then it's like, yeah, we're going to have to pull under the overpass because it's over there. It just uh, mm-hmm. fun, fun times. Living it's, it's, in it's a, it's a great, place. it's a very strange thing when weather feels dangerous. Yes. Because you deal with weather every day. You're so familiar with it. But then those few times, maybe not so few, but those times where, you know, like, um, oh, I was, uh, I had just gotten my driver's license and I was driving uh, in uh, Edmund, or I was driving around in Alberta, and this weird freak blizzard came out of nowhere in April. A blizzard, and my little Honda Civic like could <laughs> not handle it, and so I was on the side of the road, and you just felt it every time a truck would drive past you. You're getting covered and covered in more and more snowdrifts, and I'm starting to panic. And there's like that feeling of being completely, like pretty much completely helpless mm-hmm. against the elements. Um, it, you know, with the exception of a very, very sturdy 1991 Honda Civic. Well, thank you very much. I mean, yeah, like like when it does that like sudden downpour rain, and it's like mm. the hardest rain that's ever been, you know, spit out from you know the atmosphere. You know, it's one of those when it's just yeah, like, yeah, it's like somebody like turned on a Needles. faucet, and you like the windshield yeah. wipers are going, and you just like I I can't see, like, uh, yeah. A friend and I were driving to uh, an anime convention, and so we're driving to Dallas, and it starts pouring rain. So we, like, turn, like, there are people in front of us that are getting off on the side of the road. We're getting off on the side of the road. Like, nobody's going. Like, it was bad. And we thought that we were pulled over. We were actually, like, in the, the three lanes of traffic. We couldn't tell that there were three lanes. We only thought there were two. So we were just, like, stopped on the side. I mean, like, in the in the highway. Like, we didn't know yeah. that there were three lanes. But, like, the people in front of us didn't know either. So, like, they we, we were stopped by, by, kind of behind them. So it was one of those where we're like, yeah, we were just, like, dead stopped on the highway for, like, six, seven minutes. Just waiting for this, like, squall to pass. Yeah. Uh. Ugh. And I, I, I we, sh- I mean, I could, I could talk about weird weather all day. But man, the, uh, the one time I was down in, I was in Disney World in Florida, and that is a, that's an insane beast of weather. Like what, when those, when those clouds roll in, when those clouds roll in, and it gets, like just like you were saying, that torrential, like downpour, and then a few minutes later it's gone, and it's like thirty degrees with eighty percent humidity mm-hmm. again. It's madness, madness. Yeah, dude, it's uh, it's craziness. Crazy um, yeah, like, and and that's one thing that like coming here, uh, like 
Californians are weird, man. Like, they, they're just weird. Like, <laughs> everything is cold to them. And I'm like, oh, yeah, guys, yeah. it's like 65 degrees. This is per- so, like, 65. That's like uh, 17, that's like, 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. I kind of know. I kind of know my my Celsius conversions. Like I've I kind of, yeah. um, because like I watch I a have lot an of approximation, like, but I'm never spot on. Like I, I kind of watch like I I watch a lot of like NHK and uh, like BBC. So like it's all oh, metric yeah. there. So it's like boop boop boop. Oh no, wait, it's all imperial. Wait, it's all in Celsius. Is that yeah. imperial yeah. or me- I I don't care. That's uh, metric. That's metric. It's metric. That's what I thought. I was like. But yeah. there's something in my head was like, is that right? Um, so, <laughs> like, I, I, I'm just I'm I'm in there in shorts, and they're like, oh no, it's too cold. Like we were there last weekend. Uh, a friend was in town, and like the high was 55, and I'm just like, I'm in there in shorts. I've got a t-shirt and like a light hoodie, and they're like, how are you not cold? I'm like, because it's nice outside. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm from Oklahoma where it gets below freezing. Like, this is yeah. this is very nice. Yeah, this is mild. Yeah, it's like, this, like, this is perfect. Like, it, it got a little chilly when the sun went down, but that was when I was like, I can go home now. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's, I, I, that's I when you in, can uh, go home. I, I was in Nevada last year around this time, uh, early January, and it was that that was wild because during the day, you know, you'd be, I'd, I'd be like cooking. I'd be like, man, I'm, I'm gonna get burned. It's, it's hot. But as soon as the sun dips below the mountains, you remember, oh, oh it's January. <laughs> desert, <laughs> desert bad. Like desert bad. Yeah, desert bad. crazy. Oh uh, man. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, so, uh, what, what else are you really into? I mean, we were talking a little bit earlier about Dungeons and Dragons. Like, are you, do you run campaigns? Yeah. Do you like, do you just like roll with it, or how, how do you, how do, you, how do you uh, do? I man, I love talking about Dungeons and Dragons. I think it is it is one of the one of like fifth edition and the accessibility of fifth edition. And again, I, I I don't like to talk about Critical Role too much because I'm just painfully jealous of all of their careers and their lives and stuff. Um, but for what it for what that has done. Um, you know, I, I just think that Dungeons and Dragons is a great excuse to play make believe, and I think mm-hmm. everyone should play make believe because it's it's good for you. Like it, it, it's the thing I like about it's the thing I like about voice acting. If we want to tie it all together, is that it's just it's it's play, it's make believe, it's recess, and and that is at at the heart of every good Dungeons and Dragons game. It's just a bunch of people, grown adults. <laughs> Just getting together and allowing themselves to be silly together, mm-hmm. and that is that. That's one of the finest gifts I think you can give people is just the the space to go and be silly. Because I, when when you do that, when, when when you give that to a kid, they take it freely and they have a blast with it. And oftentimes, when you give it to a grown up, they don't know what to do with themselves. Um, and I think Dungeons and Dragons is a really good framework to just play. So I, I love that. Um, I think Dungeon Master is probably my favorite. It's it's my favorite class, <laughs> but I the but d- doing the doing the prep work can be frustrating. Um, but yeah, I mean I've, I've ran games, I've played in many games, played in a few one offs, uh, played in a few one offs that have turned into games. You know, it's the the, the scheduling is tricky, but outside of that, uh, anytime you sit down and you get to roll some dice with some friends and maybe play a character you've never played before or mm-hmm. do something different or you know you know last time i played a really dumb character so i want to play a really intelligent you know paladin who's really caring or whatever it's just a it's a fun exercise i love it i completely agree like it's mm-hmm. like and I'll, I'll i'll straight up say like you know critical role that's what got me into it um right. yeah, yeah. like it, it it got me into the the dungeons and durgans um mm-hmm. so like <laughs> Yeah, like, and I, I that that's definitely the thing. Like, you can be whoever you want to, and you can play the character however you want to play it. It's like not like a video game where like things are scripted. Like anything can anything can happen in a Dungeons and Dragons. Like I did a, uh, it's it's not come out yet. It's it's rough, but we're 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 I, I've got things to do with it. Um, we did an episode with uh, 
uh, KG Tang and his wife, uh, uh, and Marcy and uh, Adam MacArthur. Um, we did a whole a whole thing, and I uh, I ran it, and I I spent all this time doing you know all this prep work, getting everything really nice uh, for everybody. <laughs> first thing, first thing that Adam does has never played before. Uh, I've, I've, they're going. It's a one shot. They're going. It's a very simple quest. Um, they go and it like I've is. got my bar person, and he's like, "Oh, I'm going to." Yeah, he's the person who's going to give you guys this quest. Literally goes punches him, like punches him right yeah. in the face, and I'm just like, "I." Um, well, that was that was a thing. Uh, they're in this. Yeah. They're in this tower. And it's like, okay, you're in this, there's a, uh, a you know, it's four stories. The third story is this uh, this library. So I'm like, all right, so you've got this library now. Uh, what are you going to do? He sets it on fire. And I'm like, all right, you guys have to go to the fourth floor. <laughs> it's like, have, have fun doing that. Like, you, you've literally set the world on fire, and yeah. you literally went up. Like, yeah, it, 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 uh, I think in terms of being a, a dungeon master, like for, so as much fun as it is to play as a PC and yeah, you have all that, you have all this, uh, latitude to just, you know, uh, go and play. It's like, Oh, I, I, I want to zig. Like, I, I know you want me to zag, but I, I want to zig and, and see what's going on down here. Or what's that NPC's backstory. And I think, uh, being a DM is really frustrating. Um, or it can be. But it's also just a wonderful exercise in lateral thinking. It's like, okay, how can I, how can I get them back on on my track? So it's like I have a bunch of things planned. They have uprooted them. How do I get them back? Mm-hmm. And when you're on, you're on, and and you just have like these sessions that just somehow through you know through all the machinations of your your idiot PCs, you manage to like keep them on the critical path towards whatever you're going towards, or you discover something new and then you get to save all that other stuff for later. It's just a, it's a beautiful exercise. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely thrilled to see people uh, embrace it and come into it uh, no matter how they, no matter how, like whether it's through Stranger Things or Critical Role or um, uh, the Adventure Zone or whatever it is. It's like, Oh, the Adventure Zone. Oh, Taco. Awesome. Oh, Taco. <laughs> classic taco <laughs> oh man yeah like, and i i love yeah. that you know that's something that's you know popping up now like we're getting a lot of these like could could you think like when you were we'll just say when when you're you know 18 years old um would you have thought that you know there would be like all of these like were, were you into D D back then or like when did when did D like kind of kick for you we tried to play a few times um we tried to play a few times uh, when I was growing up, I was in a I was in a play, and with a bunch of youth cast. And when I was probably uh, fourteen or fifteen or so, and you know somebody brought the D and D books, and we kind of rolled up characters and we messed around a bit. But it was never it, that. That must have been. Well, I, I don't know what edition it was, but it certainly didn't feel accessible. And I think, like what uh, what wizards have done with. Uh, fifth edition is just made it ma- made the math really simple, so it's it doesn't feel like mm-hmm. you're doing taxes, and you just get to you just get to go and like I said, just go and play in this make believe. You don't need uh, mini figs, you don't need maps. All you need is a basic idea of how the rules go, and a set of dice, and then just an imagination, and then that all important improv rule of just saying yes to everything and making things work. It's uh, mm-hmm. so anyway. So to answer your question, I suppose when I was eighteen or so, I, I I don't think I would have ever suspected that. Certainly not like pen and paper, Dungeons and Dragons being a big thing. Certainly not what it is now because oh, it yeah. is it's everywhere. The fact that it's part of popular culture now is is like ridiculous. Like I mean yeah, because I mean yeah, you mentioned Stranger Things. I'm like I completely forgot about Stranger Things. Like. That was a big part of the first season of Stranger Things, was Dungeons mm-hmm. and Dragons. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, man, yeah, it's absolutely. yeah. Like I'm waiting for uh, you know, 
you know, Stranger Things season four, and they'll like be playing Magic the Gathering, and they'll bring magic back. <laughs> yeah, um, no kidding. Yeah. Well, that never went away. It's just yeah. Uh, every, everybody who's really into it ran out of money. It pretty much. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, geez. Uh, yeah. So uh, what we're gonna say on D and D, just because I mean it's fun. It's a fun topic. Um, of course. What, yeah. Like, what's been one of your like? Have you have you ever like? As a DM, have you ever? I mean, like, how how do you play with your players? Like, because like we've got a DM and he oh. he doesn't try to kill us, but he tries to kill us. So, um, yeah. is is that something what you do? Like, how how you play your games or? So you know the the way I see it is behind my DM screen. Nobody else knows what's going on, so I can really write the story that I want to write. The dice are just a helpful suggestion, and it also, you know, it, it, it does it does give up some randomness, and it does make things exciting for yourself, you know, because, you know, even, e- even the finest of deities doesn't want everything planned because then it becomes boring. So um, my favorite thing about being a DM is, of course, being all the NPCs. I love that. I love doing the voices and... You know, um, I, I love uh, my, my one of my favorite things that I started to integrate. And then my sister, who DMs another group, she kind of took it on is whenever you kill somebody in a and d thing, you always say, would you like to describe your kill? Would you like to describe how you did that? Mm-hmm. Because it's it's really fun because I always have in my mind's eye as a PC what I'm actually doing and how cool it looks because it, al- it always looks cool. I never do anything lame. Um so I like to do that, and then, but in terms of like, I I try not to hold my PC's hands, and you know if 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 that creature they're fighting, you know if that owl bear hits hard, then that owl bear hits hard, and if they get knocked down, then they get knocked down. Uh, I've never had to kill a PC. I've come close a few times. Um, you know, like like that thing where it's like they meet the big bad evil guy really early on, and you know the yeah. one go gung ho. Ranger is like, I'm going to shoot him with an arrow. It's like, no, you're not. That's a terrible idea. You know, that's a, you know, that's a, uh, that's a Lich King. Please yeah, it's don't like, do it's like bro, you're level two. <laughs> yeah, it's, you're not stopping this guy. I, I love where you're coming from. Love your enthusiasm. You're going to die. Don't do that. But then they do. And then you kind of like, you just kind of weasel them out of it. Um, there's actually a, in one of the modules I was running, which one was it? Uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen, I think. And it's uh, and early on, you're supposed to confront your PCs with a big dragon, or a, not a big dragon, but a um, like a, a big evil guy that they're supposed to fight and lose to. And mm-hmm. I think that's a great place to start a campaign. Yeah, I mean that that's the so same fun. way because like we're running Waterdeep right now, and that's one of the things in Waterdeep. Like you're gonna fight the big guy at the beginning, and then like you're gonna have to run away. Like it's one of those like unless you want a TPK, yeah. like it's like. You better run away. Yeah. And th- 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 that's a tough thing to instill in PCs who are like, wait a minute, I'm the hero of this story. I'm supposed to conquer. It's like, well, you know, but also a tactical retreat is not a loss. <laughs> exactly. It's like, yeah, like sometimes they help because then you can rest. Um, exactly. And recuperate. Exactly. I'll, I'll look at the end. And, you know, if you're, you know, part elven, it's like, <laughs> it's only three hours. <laughs> <laughs> there you go and that makes a huge difference oh my gosh it's so good i because it's like you're like oh, we're gonna long rest well i'm gonna take half of my long rest you know meditate and then i'm gonna like study a book or something you know Ugh. learn mm. learn something about the yeah. world that's right yeah that that, that that your dm is just gonna have to make up on the fly exactly it's like mm. uh yes you've seen those runes before they were inscribed on your uh father's hunting knife uh, yeah like so uh what are been your favorite um you know favorite campaigns and stuff that you've run or been a part of Ooh. well the, the the one i'm a part of right now um is really cool because uh so my my older sister is a great dm and she's a genius um m- my whole family is really awesome but uh, uh that's neither here nor there my older sister is a really good dm and she she was running a game for a long time that I was a I was a monk uh, I was a monk in, but I was really stupid, and that was really fun. Uh, I love that character. Playing monks is sweet. High level monks are like 
it's like, man, how, like, how long do you got? Because I'm rolling like 12 D8s. Yeah, it's like, but, I'm, um, I, like I'm going to do 12 D8s. Oh, you know what? I should go ahead and just, you know, blow a couple key too. We'll just do it all over yeah. again. <laughs> exactly. But um, the character I'm playing now is like, I made him the team dad. He's just like a 65 <laughs> year old human paladin who just wants to make sure everybody's like, okay. And so all my fighting stuff is mostly just trying to protect people and buffing people and, you know, trying to de-escalate whenever I can. And it's like, it's a blast to RP. It's a blast to RP. And um, yeah, he's, he, he's my guy. Like, I, I love this character so much. Yeah. Oh, man. I wish we, I wish we you know, role-played. Like, that's one of the things, like... There are there are three of us in our group that we want to are like they, we we want to role play, but our DM just doesn't. He and like his his wife is also just like I'm not gonna role play. Um, right. But like so like me his wife and uh, another girl Elizabeth, we're all like in in our current one we're all siblings, like we're uh cool. like we we pulled something out of like Sword Coast. It's like a lichen elf. So like you can turn into a wolf whenever you want, um, so like that's how you know we've been playing. And so like we're looking for our parent. Like a whole place was killed. We're looking for the killers. We're all together. Um, nobody knows that we can turn into wolves. And like Jennifer, she's basically uh, she's a a blood hunter. So like she turns into a werewolf and everything. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those like. It would be so much fun to role play, but we just don't, and it hurts inside. Like, oh, I'm it, sorry to hear it that. hurts so much because it's like, oh, we can have <laughs> so much fun, but uh, it it doesn't work. Yeah, uh, it yeah, it's just very sad. So uh, it goes. Yeah. Ah yeah. uh, man. <laughs> so have you ever thought about um you know like doing one of the one like one of the podcasts or whatever like doing like a something like adventure zone where then you know you like record you know over a weekend yeah, and like uh, put them out yeah a, a little bit I, I i think like so this this is uh again this is just going broader into like my philosophy and i, I think just something that i'm i'm starting to i'm starting to come to terms with in terms of uh my career is that no matter how much I do, no matter how much, no matter what my resume looks like, no matter how many times I've recorded this week, no matter what is going on, it's never going to be enough. Mm -hmm. It's never, ever going to be enough. I'm always going to want more. Um, and so how do I fix that? How do, how, how do I not make my entire identity about always wanting more, about always chasing the dragon? Well, what I've come to believe is that I think I just need to, I can do voiceover work, I can pursue my profession with the fullest of my being, but I need to find things that aren't that. So I, I, need, to, I need to do things that aren't for other people, they're not performative, they're for myself, they're not for monetary value, they're for me to enjoy with my friends. And that's what Dungeons and Dragons is, and that's what um, like cooking is, or um, you know, playing video games or whatever, you know, it, it's, it's finding those things that are for me and not for anybody else that are going to get me through. Like, so I'm not always thinking about what am I doing next? What's the next big gig? You know, am I working enough? You know? Yeah. It, does that make sense? Yeah. So, so you're not like always on pretty much. Yeah, because I, I, I feel like I'm always on, and I love to give myself. I, I love to perform and give myself to anything. So if somebody asks me, hey, dude, do you want a guest on, on a on a and d podcast we're doing? Absolutely. Sign me up. But I have no interest, or I have limited interest in getting together a group of my friends uh, to record um, a Dungeons & Dragons thing um, when I think I just have more fun, just or at least equal amounts of fun, just sitting around, not having to worry about the recording, and just enjoying the just company playing, of some yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I'd love to do it, but I, I also hate editing, uh, <laughs> audio editing. I hate it. 
Um, so again, hats off to you in that department. Oh, um, oh, you think we and... edit? No, oh, no, I, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, well, well, I mean, with and, and... the amount I'm about to swear, you're gonna have to. Oh, dude, it can't, it can't be worse than Jesse. Oh my gosh, when uh, when he and Raquel Jesse... did that season uh, that season three spoiler episode. Oh my gosh, I'm just oh, sitting yeah. there and I'm like, I could edit this. It's just too much though. I'll be I'll be at this yeah. for an hour or so. I'm just I'm just gonna put the explicit tag on there and just hope for you know just hope for the best. Well, the, 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 those two are the, the, those two are degenerates through and through. So. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So bad. <laughs> yeah, it's some of the worst. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, that, I, I was gonna. That, that's kind of where I was gonna go with the, you know, like how do you, you know, how do you switch off? Which you know, you you answer for me, like with the video games and the D and D and stuff like that. Totally. Yeah, and and uh, cooking's a big one. Uh, I've been cooking more and more because it's a it's a fun creative pursuit, but you get to eat it afterwards. Exactly. Like, it also makes a great gift. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's definitely one of those things where you're like, you know what? Like I did this, and then I get to eat it, and you you actually yeah. get something out of it. Unlike a video game, it's just like, yeah, I won, and it's like I beat the thing. Yeah, like playing Destiny, like doing a raid. It was like, yeah, I did the Destiny raid. Here's a cloak. And I'm like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now do it again, idiot. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I didn't do it on Nightfall. Oh, like I, I don't have the time. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get you. Like, like, yeah. Like I'm about to cook here and you know here in a few. So yeah, I, I completely get that. Um, uh, have, have you? So like, you're doing a lot of voiceover and everything. We're back on the voiceover. Like I mm-hmm. said, tangents. Um, mm-hmm. So so uh, you're doing the voiceover. Like, have you ever like? Have you ever thought about doing like audiobooks and stuff like that? Um, a little bit. I mean, I I I would if I would if an opportunity uh, arose if it popped up for me. Uh, I've never really pursued it, and you know, it's a funny thing too where uh, I love my voice. Like Jason was saying, I like listening to my own voice, but I do feel like my voice is very cartoony, and I I'd be hard pressed to think of uh, an audiobook where you'd want to listen to this for more than like. <laughs> four hours at a time bro uh, man unless like it was my own young adult books man yeah that, yeah that's what i mean at, I, i'm sure there's i, I i'm sure it's out there uh if i were to go and track it down um but you know i've been i've been really lucky and really fortunate in my career that i feel like the maybe not the less but the less focused I am of chasing stuff down, the more likely I am to find something I like. I, I find when you're when you're looking under every rock for a possibility of, of work, um, you, you tend to lose sight of, or I've certainly lost sight, I have lost sight sometimes, of what I'm actually in this for, like what I'm actually doing here. Um, and I mean, I, I think that sounds a little high-minded and maybe it's, Maybe it's not completely accurate, but uh, I, I really like allowing the universe to come to me because it's worked out. Um, and when it stops working out, maybe I'll maybe I'll start looking for some some more audiobooks or something. But uh, for now, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of hopeful that things will keep <laughs> keep swinging my way. Because why not? Keep hoping for you know Crow Master to make an even bigger appearance in the next season. <sighs> I'm, of the dragon prince i'm sensing a spin-off myself <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh dude cole this was this was super fun yeah man well I, I i really appreciate you having me on man and uh yeah again i just uh big big thank you for for like uh for highlighting this side of the work and talking to people um on this side of the work and on all the animation sides of the work it's just like there is a incredible amount of energy and passion that goes into making all this stuff happen and it's really nice to 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 know that it's being seen and not just heard. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Oh, uh I did have one more question. Um please. So wh- wh- what's what's your dream? What's your dream gig? Oh man. That's tough cuz I mean I I would love to I would love to keep playing Spider-Man. I'd love <laughs> to play Spider-Man in a in a in a series, uh in a, in like a a big old animated series. But um, ah, here's my last little bit of high-minded uh, nonsense that I'll throw at you. 
when I first got into this and I first booked Mega Man, I was like, I'm going to do this forever and I'm going to be rich and famous. And then a couple years ago, I was like, you know what? I just want to be rich. You can keep the fame. And a couple years ago, maybe even last year, I was just like, I don't even want to be rich. What I want to do is I want to make enough money so I can pay my rent and take my friends out for drinks and uh, enjoy my life. It, yeah. and, and, you know, maybe just live comfortably. I don't want to be rich. I don't want to be famous. I just want to be happy. And maybe voice acting is the, is the vehicle for that. Um, I think it's I think it's part of the vehicle for it, and then the rest is just what I do with uh, with the rest of my time, uh, which is always kind of a toss up. Anyways, all that being said, my dream gig more Spidey. Give me more Spidey, please. I, I thought you were gonna be like my Don't dream gig Batman. Be like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I should have said that. That was much funnier. You should do another take where I say that. <laughs> no, that would involve editing. I don't want. <laughs> Fair, fair. Like I, I said, like I that. said, super lazy, like yeah. so lazy. Yeah. Um, y- you know what the best answer is? My, my my dream gig is something I get to do regularly uh, with a talented group of people that I can be proud of. There you go. That's the dream gig. Yeah, that could be anything. Something that you wouldn't mind yeah. watching again. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Oh man. So That's so so Colt, where can everybody find you, like social media wise, if they want to follow you? And keep up Ooh, with all your if, shenanigans. Yeah, well, there, there are shenanigans, to be sure. Um, if you want to follow me on uh, Twitter, I'm easily followed at uh, at Cole M. F. Howard. Um, and then if you what, want to follow what me does on the, Instagram... What does the I, MF stand for, Cole? It depends on who's asking. If it's my <laughs> grandmother, I say it's Metal Face. <laughs> um, but it's not that. Um, it's uh, Monday, Friday. Um Anyhow, so yeah, at Cole F. F. Howard on Twitter, and then I'm at cmfh.esq uh, on <laughs> on Instagram for some reason. What? You know, I thought it was funny. You you know you can change that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. In for a penny, in for a pound, baby. You know, I mean, buy the ticket, take the ride. Oh man! But um, yeah, so I'm I'm in both those places, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm on it. Probably more more regularly than I should be, but you know that's life. Yeah, I mean it happens. It, it right. just it just happens. Um, yeah. So uh, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh L Kane. You can find the podcast on Instagram at Animation Station Podcast on Twitter at Animate Podcast. All episodes available iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and our website animationstationpodcast.com. dot com. Um, be sure and check out our last episode after you're done with this one, of course, because there'd be, it'd be weird if you went back, if you stopped now and then started listening to the other podcast. Um, but we, we were able to go to DreamWorks and we sat with, uh, Rad Seacrest, um, who's, by the way, his name is Rad. It's Radford, but I mean, his name's just Rad because that's Rad. Um, we sat with him, um, about, and talked a little bit about his, uh, new series on Netflix, Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts. Um, I, I almost said Wilder People again. That, it's, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> it's a hard one to make. It's, it's hard, like, of, in the beasts of incredible size. Um, but yeah, check that episode out, and then go watch the series on Netflix, and you can hear, uh... Cole and uh you know because I think we're contractually obligated to at least once every 14 episodes to mention the Dragon Prince so go listen Hell to yeah. Cole in the Dragon Prince please do yeah we, we we need more seasons it's it's one of the finest projects I've ever had the privilege of working on it's great oh definitely all right so uh so for the animation station podcast I'm Josh uh, and I'm Cole see Perfect. Bye. See, that, that, you know, we, we, it, it didn't take a long time. You were able to stop. You were, you were Johnny on the top. <laughs>